Shalom, everybody. I have a special burden on my heart, and it regards our Pilgrim Fathers. And I'm going to call this the Pilgrims Down the Memory Hole. And I think I have an important message to give. First, I'll read a scripture. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing where he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed, and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Hebrews 11, 8 to 12. Our Western society loves to commemorate historic anniversaries. When I was a child, we commemorated the 100th anniversary of the Civil War. It was constant and pervasive, and as a child, I loved it. I became quite a Civil War buff. Picture books, lectures, studies of generals such as Grant and Lee were everywhere we turned. And of course, the November 22nd, 1963 anniversary of the assassination of John F. Kennedy is dutifully remembered every single year, and rightly so. More recently, we had a four-year remembrance of the 100th anniversary of World War I, which I found fascinating also. I was in the UK a few years ago, and they were commemorating the 400th anniversary of the King James Version of the Bible. It was amazing to me, because I know the UK I know is very secular, post-Christian society, with a very strong but tiny remnant church. But even the godless BBC had to commemorate the King James Version and its contribution to the English language. But there's an equally profound 400-year anniversary, which for the most part is being relatively ignored by our society, and that amazes me. I speak of the 400th anniversary this week of the landing of the Pilgrim Fathers on the Mayflower. I'm amazed at the relative lack of popular mainstream interest in the event, and I've been pondering why before God. It's not that we just can't remember that far back anymore. After all, last year, America was awash with an abomination called the 1619 Project a Marxist and deeply flawed version of America's founding. It was 1619 that the first African slaves were brought to the New World, and the point of the project is to say that that is the very founding of America with nothing but oppression and injustice. Everywhere we turned, there was an unprecedented educational push to establish the lie that America's real founding is based on racism and exploitation. Now, there are millions of tax dollars flowing in order to insert this propaganda, the 1619 Project, in the public schools. What does it mean that 1619 is so emphasized while 1620 is basically ignored? It is just another example of the spiritual battle being waged for the soul of our nation between those who were formed by the Judeo-Christian outlook and those who are the fruit of the ongoing atheistic revolution. The idea is to spiritually demoralize America, to disintegrate our body politic, and disinherit us from our forefathers, their faith, and accomplishments. Now, admittedly, America has always had two souls. For a beautiful example of that, God gave us the contrast between Jamestown, which was a colony established by free-loading, quote, gentlemen, out for treasure and wealth, and who refused to work to feed themselves, instead living off the goodwill of the Indian tribes, and eventually cheating and stealing from them. But the other soul of America is that of the Puritans and Separatists, who risked all to come here to establish a city on a hill, a place to worship God, and evangelize 
the Indians, if possible. I believe 1620 is being ignored now because this is a Christian story, complete with earnest, God-fearing people, miracles, and a 60-year peace with the Indians. These people wanted to serve God, to live honest lives, to make settlements, to raise children, and build a just society for future generations. That doesn't fit the atheistic narrative. The pilgrims were not oppressors. They were peace-loving settlers. They were builders as well as worshipers. Originating from, originating from the village of Scrooby in England, the original pilgrim fathers were nonconformists, which is a religious designation, which meant that they were Christians, but they didn't want to worship in the Anglican church, which was the state church. They wanted to form their own assemblies, preach the gospel and evangelism. But for, for that, many were arrested, harassed, and their churches were shut down by government agents. Now, ironically, I just saw a film of English police invade a church service recently in the name of protecting people from COVID. It was appalling. They barged right in during the worship, scaring women and children and proclaiming that the worshipers were an unlawful assembly. I guess we're back full circle. The more things change, the more they remain the same. This is in England. Now, back to my story. The little persecuted group of believers scraped together their meager funds and moved to Holland, where there was more religious freedom. But after a few years, the pilgrims found Holland to be too worldly, and they were concerned about losing their children to the world. So out of their extreme poverty, they pooled enough funds to charter two boats, and half of the congregation set out for the new world in search of religious freedom. They soon had to turn back because one of the ships leaked so badly it was deemed unseaworthy, so they crammed into one ship, as you know, the Mayflower. These weren't professional soldiers or adventurers. They were simple English evangelical Christians who risked all on that boat in search of religious freedom. Many had sold themselves into indentured servitude in order to afford the journey. There were miracles of God's providence. For example, the sailors abused the pilgrims badly, calling them puke stockings and threatened to throw them overboard. They even tried to prevent them from bringing a prized printing press. The pilgrims wanted to print the Bible in America. Now, had they succeeded, the ship would have found itself in deep trouble later in the journey. A storm broke the undergirding of the main mast, and the only way they could repair it was by using the screw of the printing press, which fit perfectly under the mast, replacing the broken piece and enabling the crew to elevate the mast into its proper place. Another uh, miracle, a storm blew the pilgrims off course. Had they landed where they intended, they would have joined another colony in Virginia, which unknown to them had 120 or so people reduced to starvation eating boiled shoes and belt leather. Third, the Mayflower instead landed in Massachusetts at just the place where a fierce tribe of Indians had recently been devastated by a plague, nearly wiping them all out. Had they survived or not been plagued, that tribe would surely have instead killed every one of the pilgrims. And then finally, a few months into the New World, the pilgrims were startled by the visit of an Indian who walked into their palisade and asked in perfect English, have you got any beer? He'd been taken to England a few years earlier, learned English, and some said was converted to Christianity, but then wanted to return only to find out his tribe had been wiped out by plague. He would be an invaluable aid to the pilgrim company, teaching them how to live off the land, when and where to fish and plant, etc. These stories were once well-known and cherished in America. Now they're being ignored and forgotten in our politically correct, atheistic, cultural revolution. We must not let this happen. What is a pilgrim? A pilgrim is a religious traveler who seeks a better city and who knows that there's something higher and purer available from God to any who will heed God's call and follow. The Marxist atheists hate the pilgrims because they were unashamed Christians. Thus they denigrate them, misrepresent them, and caricature them 
on every opportunity. The lack of commemoration of them and what they would suffer and die to build is a shame. Scripture tells us the memory of the just is blessed, but the name of the wicked shall rot. Those seeking to destroy this country and are willing to lie and denigrate the pilgrims and others in order to do it could never themselves build a just and free society as the pilgrims would do, for it takes Christianity applied to do so. They couldn't hold a candle to these people. It's much easier to destroy than to build in this fallen world. So every Thanksgiving I gather my family around and tell them the story of these remarkable saints as we all thank God for his indescribable blessings. May God help us all to keep the feast in faith and in love.